Well, hello again. Welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Um, I heard an expression uh, the other day for the first time. And uh, surprisingly, no, it wasn't that one. It was bias T. So I wondered, what on earth is a bias T? And then it was explained to me that a bias T is a device that enables you to feed the 12 volt um, uh, supply voltage for an automatic ATU up the coax. So instead of having a coax going from the house to the ATU and a, uh, a twin cable going from the house to the ATU to supp supply the 12 volts, you can do it all with the coax. So you would have you'd have your radio, then you would have a bias T. Then you would have another bias T at the other end, and then you would have your auto ATU, like that. And what happens is you inject your plus 12 volts to run the auto ATU into the bias T, like that. Then you take the 12 volts out of the bias T at the other end to power the automatic ATU, you have a bit of coax going between there and the ATU. The coax going from there back to the house. So this is the coax that would have gone to the ATU, remember? Because this, uh, this bias T is just by the ATU there. And another, this coax comes off the radio, goes to the bias T, and another bit of coax goes from there to there. So that is all a bias T arrangement is. A bias T at the radio end, and you have a bias T by the ATU end. So, what's in a bias T? Fortunately, not very much. Just like that. I am wearing a fez. So it's perfectly permissible for me to do a Tommy Cooper impression. Right, so what's in a bias T? Well, there's uh, a bias T, it's basically a box. It's got an SO239 socket on the input. Got a capacitor. And RF plus DC output. We have an RF choke, decouple that, it goes to the chassis as well. So the chassis connections are just the metal box it's in, and you would feed 12 volts in like that. That would be the naught, so you've got naught 12 volts going in where the naught is connected to the chassis, and the 12 volts goes through an RF choke up onto the coax that's going out to the ATU side of the bias T, uh, the capacitor. So what this capacitor is doing is it's keeping this DC off your radio. So on, at this point here on your coax you've got the RF that's going straight through the capacitor plus you've got the DC as well on the, uh, on the coax. And at the other end you would have uh, exactly the opposite. So you've got your SO239 socket. That goes to your ATU, the RF. You'll take the DC out. That's a plus 12 volts. And that's a zero. So let's make that an ATU like that, and the 12 volts comes out and goes in like that. So you take the 12 volts out from this end to feed the ATU, and then you've just got an RF lead going from here to the ATU. So this coax would have come across to the ATU. Uh, actually, no, the coax comes along, it's got a bullet connector in it because there's a lead on the ATU, a tail on the ATU, and it connects the two PL259s together. So you take the bullet out and you put that in. So you connect the uh, remote end of the coax to the bias T, 
the tail from the ATU goes to the other side of the bias T. Important to get the bias T the right way around, of course. So you want to keep the RF plus DC. <laughs> side facing the um, <laughs> facing the coax between the house and the ATU. You don't want to, you don't want to get these the wrong way around. And uh, then you can just feed the 12 volts up through out along through the coax down through the choke back into the ATU. So you've only got a coax then going from the house. Remember this is in the house. This is at the remote position at the antenna feed point where the ATU is. You've just got a coaxial cable going between these two points. It's carrying the RF and the 12 volt DC to run the automatic ATU. There's not a separate cable running the DC out to the ATU. So that's all that's in a bias T. Um, I actually um, uh, this is the uh, this is the house end. So that's the that's the radio. I actually uh, so you've got a coax going from you know there to there. I put a fuse in there like that so that um, if someone chops through the uh, uh, coaxial cable um, well okay if I chop through the coaxial cable and uh, put a short on it it's only going to blow the fuse it's not going to bother the power supply I didn't put a fuse at the other end the auto ATU has got its own fuse um, saves me drilling another hole in the box at the other end. So I'll show you what it looks like. I can't show you the remote end one because it's installed. I made these this morning and, and uh, installed them and they work a treat. So uh, The outside one's got tape around it and everything else but this is the one that goes inside the house. So as you can see there's very little in it. It's just uh, all, all these bits came from JCAR. Uh, the box, the other one at the end is uh, identical apart from the fact it doesn't have the fuse holder in it. Um, these are 470 micro Henry inductors, I think, from um, uh, just off the shelf things from JCAR. These are 0.013 kV capacitors. I would have preferred to have used high voltage, high current, and proper RF capacitor for the through thing, and I probably will later on, but I just used these because I could get hold of them fairly easy. And that is a braid off of RG58, which has been flattened out. And um, on the bottom of that bolt there, and that bolt there, is a solder tag on the inside. It's, and it's, it's, it's placed, it's flattened uh, over, over, and pushed over the solder tag at each end and soldered. So that's the RF current path. I don't like the idea of RF going through these die cast boxes. They can be made of funny materials and give funny effects from time to time. Probably not at HF, but um, I know for a fact they have done it at, um, at VHF. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'll bound to it uh, at UHF if that's uh, if, um, if they're going to affect VHF, they'll affect UHF probably worse. So there we are. So it's two point oh ones in parallel, point oh one capacitors, rated at three thousand volts, just going from the inner of that socket to the inner of that socket. So that's just the RF throughput. Uh, there's the RF choke that's uh, keeping the RF out of the power supply. This is such a high impedance that the, the RF doesn't see this. A bit of decoupling just in case. And the 12 volts comes in just through a two pin din. Um, and the positive comes in, goes through the fuse, goes through the choke, up to the capacitor. So this is the one that would go out to the remote ATU. Uh, this coax is going to be carrying the RF and the DC. And this one here is just a coax, which would, uh, short, short coax with tile, which would go off to my radio. It actually goes to the HF um, low pass filter. Uh, but it keeps any DC off of that. So there we go, very quick and easy to make, wasn't terribly expensive and um, it's quite a good way of uh, quite a good quite a good way of doing this because as I said, you know, it's only one cable. Alright, well uh, as always I hope you found that at least vaguely interesting. And uh, maybe maybe even maybe even slightly entertaining. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.